Once upon a time in the realm of psychological discourse, Joram Peterson, a renowned psychologist, stood before his audience. In his hands, he held a tapestry woven with threads from the minds of Sigmund Freud, Thomas Hobbes, Jean Piaget, and the essence of the human psyche. Peterson embarked on a journey to unravel this intricate fabric, discussing the challenges of human consciousness, the dance between the conscious and unconscious, and the stories that ancestors leave behind. This tale is not just about the cerebral mechanism that govern our actions but also a reflection on culture, ideology and the age-old battle of desires versus societal norms. So sit back and let's explore the world of the mind through Peterson's words. And Freud's theory, and this is where it differs from the theories that we talked about earlier, say with regards to Piaget, Freud's theory is really more about control. He thought of all of these potential subsystems and memories conflicting with each other, like a war, like a Hobbesian war. So Hobbes was the philosopher who said that life is nasty, brutal, and short, and that in the state of nature, everyone is at war with everyone else. And so you need a, uh, a Leviathan, a top-down control system, a Leviathan, who will punish any deviance from the social contract. Well, that's the Freudian superego. Now, Freud thought of the unconscious and the conscious mind to begin with, but later he dissociated that up into id, ego, and superego. And then he thought that each of those had their unconscious elements. So, you know, so you, if you're under the grip of an id-related subpersonality, let's say, you can be conscious of that, but there's the possibility for all sorts of other id-related subpersonalities to emerge, so those would be in your unconscious. And it's also possible, and highly likely in fact, that the way that you're perceiving the world and the way you're acting in it, and even what you state as your goals are influenced in ways that you don't understand by the action of these unconscious systems. So for example, you know, maybe some of you are headed for medical school, and if I ask you why, you'll give me six humanitarian reasons, but the actual reason is, is because, you know, your grandmother would be disappointed if you were, and she might not even be alive anymore. You know, she may have, your mother may have imitated your grandmother so that that ideal is firmly embodied in her. And that set up the unspoken expectations about your behavior ever since you were a tiny child. Diving deeper, Peterson touches upon Freud's exploration of the conscious and unconscious mind. He presents a layered understanding, suggesting our actions, perceptions and goals are often influenced by hidden forces. Like an iceberg's hidden depth, there's much more lurking beneath the surface of our consciousness. Peterson narrates an intriguing tale of unseen motivations, suggesting that people may act based on ancestral expectations. Expectations. This brings a unique perspective to the age-old question of why we do what we do. A force, perhaps from a departed grandmother, might drive our life choices. Jason introduces the idea of ancestral spirits, not in a supernatural sense, but suggesting that cultural behaviors passed through generations influence our current behavior. These spirits or ideologies can possess and direct our actions, much like a story told across generations. The tension between the ID, ego, and superego forms the crux of this section. Like characters in a dramatic play, these entities constantly vie for attention, control, and gratification. This battle becomes even more intricate when societal norms like those in Victorian times come into play. But Peterson reflects on a movie to showcase how societal restrictions can warp one's personality. It's a tale of suppression and its repercussions. The frustrated desires manifest in sinister ways, painting a grim image of how societal constraints can shape personal narratives. In the one cartoon, if you remember, when it, it was the one that was most disturbing, where Mr. Natural brought Robert, that headless woman, so he wanted pure gratification without responsibility. So it's a really id-driven phenomena, you know, and you can see, so you think about what that must mean. It's like someone is under the grip of one subpersonality and it's, it's shaping all of their thoughts and their memories and their emotions. And all of a sudden that becomes gratified. So it's satiated, it disappears and bang, up comes the other one. And it's, you know, well, in that, this particular example, it was guilt and shame and anxiety, terror even and self-loathing, all of those things. And if you read about the experiences of people who commit particularly atrocious crimes, 
it's very, very common for them to experience exactly that. They're driven and they'll commit them and then they instantly flip back into their normative personality, except they're absolutely terrified by what they did. And, you know, it's more than one person is inhabiting the same psyche. Jason dives into the duality of human nature. The story here revolves around an individual under the strong grip of a dominating personality that, once satisfied, brings forth another contrasting emotion. It's like a seesaw of emotions swinging wildly. A dark twist in the story involves heinous crimes and their aftermath. Peterson touches on the dissonance within the human psyche, suggesting a possible coexistence of multiple personalities bound by shared memories, ending his deep dive, Peterson delves into the concept of memory, asserting that it's not merely a static recording but a dynamic entity. Memories are stories in themselves, colored by context, emotion and the intricacies of relationships. In conclusion, stories aren't just tales we tell. They are the essence of our existence. Every decision, every emotion and every memory crafts a new chapter in the ongoing saga of our lives and as Peterson's narrative unfolds, we are reminded of the intricate weave of forces, both seen and unseen, that pen our individual tales. As we step out of Peterson's world, there's an invitation to not just be passive listeners, but active participants in our own stories. Let's embrace the mysteries, confront the shadows, and most importantly, let's be the authors of our tales, shaped but not confined by the past and the world around us.